Welcome back to another episode of U-Tunes. That's right, the show where a couple of 30-somethings talk about things that were made for children. I'm one of your hosts, John, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Cody Smith. Thank you for joining me, sir. Of course, John. Uh, I'm Cody. I'm I'm the other person that does this thing. Uh, we're going to be talking about a really cool uh, subject today, um, one that was actually brought to us by uh, a friend of the show. Um, so yeah, I'm really stoked about this. And let's, that was a good tease. Let's talk about that friend of the show. You might know him from his own stuff, like real Unreal. Also, he has a new project, uh, project that I, that I want him to, to tell you about. Um, also you can find him. He's a writer for geeks of color, Mr. Manny Castellanos, uh, another person that will not let my people go, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate, uh, being on your channel. It's awesome. It's always a good time to talk about movies. Yeah, yeah. M Manny is the like the unofficial uh, kind of official co-host. Uh, that it's like, hey, we we need Manny. But but this was actually your your decision to, or you mm -hmm. brought this up. We were talking. I think Cody and I were kind of back and forthing about Prince of Egypt a little bit. But you're like, hey, dudes, like you guys got a cartoon show. Why don't you talk about everything, right? Yeah. Because I remember I tweeted about it. Uh, it's like I recently rewatched that for like years, Prince of Egypt, and I'm like, this is. This is great. It's amazing. Right? And then you commented and I'm like, oh, you, like maybe we should do an episode. I'm like, if you're going to do one, let's do like DreamWorks 2D animation in general. Because like I, for the most part, I like a lot of those films. Two, yeah. 2D with heavy air quotes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. That's very fair. Yeah. yeah come on. Sinbad is. Uh, mm, yeah. Not, I, was, uh, I was watching that earlier. And yeah. It's Don Blue's wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fair. Uh, yeah. The traditionally animated films by DreamWorks. Um, and there's five of them. At least that's the, the five that we're talking about. Um, it, it, I don't know if we're going to do them in order or whatever. I, I'm a bad or host, I, I don't read the show notes, but we will be talking about, you know, the Prince of Egypt, uh, Joseph King of Dreams, and all that. Before that, uh, I don't know if you guys have a special guest on your end, but I do. I tried to keep it a little bit on theme, so I'm drinking the Los Vascos. Uh, this is a 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon, kind of in, in uh, it's Chilean, I think. Yeah, it is a Chilean um, Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is going to be quite nice. I don't know where El Dorado is, so I assume it's in South America. Uh, do you guys have a special guest? Manny? Uh, I have my cup of water. Perfect. Stay hydrated. It's in a red cup. You're it's in Miami. Me. It's probably quite hot there still. No, actually, it's been chilly. It's been like in the 50s, 60s at the moment. Nice. Which, like, it's really cold for us, not going to lie. <laughs> and uh, Cody, are, are you still drinking that eggnog from the Christmas episode? No, I'm not. Uh, I gave up eggnog uh, after Christmas, but by the power of raw, I have a cup of black coffee with some vodka in it. So oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so uh, uh, yeah, not store brand black coffee Smirnoff uh, vodka. So and not, I'm not high dollaring it tonight, but you know, eh, cheers. Well, I am. We've already kind of discussed the history of this studio. Um, with the DreamWorks studio, if you watched our uh, WB, you know, Spielbergian cartoon show uh, and a little, I think we got into it a little bit with the Pixar, um, but just for those uh, audience members that are kind of joining us for the very first time, I guess, uh, give us a little background on, on the DreamWorks studio. Yeah, so DreamWorks Animation, uh, also, uh, it was originally known as uh, DreamWorks SKG, uh, was uh, founded in 2000, or sorry, in 1994 um, by three kind of media mogul uh, tycoons of the industry. Um, and this is also where the SKG in DreamWorks SKG comes from. And that is um, Steven Spielberg, which we've already discussed in, in length on the show. Um, and then Jeffrey Katzenberg, uh, who was kind of poached from Disney um, and kind of led to the ants bugs debacle, a bug's life debacle. Um, and then uh, music executive David Geffen. Uh, so SKG, the last of their names. Um, and uh, St Steven Spielberg brought over a lot of his, basically uh, basically closed emblemation to bring all of those artists that were working on that show into uh, into DreamWorks. And um, there's a lot there's a lot of buying and selling. Um, 
uh, of stuff, but uh, they're they're currently based in Glendale and they produce uh, a lot of animated feature films. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, they ha they're kind of a varying quality, I'd say. Um, there's some things like Shrek and Kung Fu Panda, which are kind of like great movies. Uh, and then there's things like The Crudes, uh, Boss Baby. Uh, I like Mad Boss Baby. Madagascar. I Boss Baby, not going to lie. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it's I, a decent movie. Yeah, it was way better than expected. See, Cody, I, you die I, on that hill. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like I like that you said, I like that you said, I'll defend it. It's a decent movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you said The Croods and Boss Baby, and though that's like night and day, right? Yeah. Now. Well, even like Madagascar, like like mm, it, it's not. Yeah. I'm not even saying I'm not even saying they're they're bad films because they're they're animated technically well. Sure, and they've got they've got lots of famous people, which is actually kind of one of the DreamWorks uh, thing. Um, and, and you know they kind of pick really high dollar you know voice actors, and we're going to see that in these movies, uh, even even in the 2D ones. And uh, uh, it's just one of those things that it's like, how could this fail? It's it's colorful it's animated it's it's uh you know it's got great voice talent uh madagascar is uh, but it's got david schwimmer <laughs> <laughs> uh, um I, I liked that as a kid not gonna lie but it's been years so i probably my opinions probably changed yeah, I think your opinion would change if you went back and watched it. Uh, <laughs> um, but one thing that's really important that I wanted to bring up uh, about the history of DreamWorks kind of leading into this. Um, in 1995, DreamWorks signed a co-production deal with Pacific Data Images to form a subs subsidy PDI LLC. Um, and the new unit would produce computer-generated feature films beginning with Ants in 1998. Uh, in the same year, DreamWorks SKG produced The Prince of Egypt, which used both CGI technology and traditional animation techniques. So uh, Pacific Data Images is kind of uh, their Pixar. Like that's that's kind of the, the part of the company that is is the 3D animation. And so while, like, like, I, like Manny said, these are their 2D movies, there is a lot of 3D uh, animation kind of um, you know, blurred in. And I, this is kind of what Fox and, uh, and Don Bluth were trying to do, uh, in his last movie, which I was about to pull up. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but, but yeah, so like it's Titan kind of, AE? yeah, Titan AE. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a, like a 3d movie, but with like 2d characters and, and, and largely 2d scenes, but with like 3d parts and like 2d characters interacting with 3d elements. And I think that this does it way better than what Fox was trying to do. See, I'll, I'll disagree with you on that. I think Titan AE worked a little bit better because I don't know. Maybe it was just the sci-fi setting, but it looked like it almost. Lo and I just came off of watching the new Mary Poppins, and that was just lovely. Uh, where you have uh, live-action actors set in a in a two D background, uh, and thank God they did it again. Um, but we're not talking about Mary Poppins. We're talking about this. Uh, where Titan AE, I think, worked. Where these were, in my opinion, the uh, CGI was the most distracting thing about it. And, and where you could tell the level of quality, and I guess we could kind of jump into it with Prince of Egypt, and then how it kind of tapered off as far as the animation style goes. The 2D animation in these films are way underrated. I think they oh, oh. were in incredible no i agree they're solid the, the 2d animation is just like superb i put on a level of like uh renaissance disney's Dizzy, renaissance period i think it's beautiful to look at uh the landscape and just in spirit when it's 2d is gorgeous it's like it's like you're looking at like a bob ross painting sometimes like it's <laughs> great I, I will say that um, the 3d is kind of used better in some cases than it is in others sure um i think in in movies like the prince of egypt uh which is the first one that we're going to be talking about it's used much more subtly and then like in spirit when the train is like sliding down the hill like it looks like they're just dragging a block down the side of a hill <laughs> like it's it's not like you know it's it's one of those things where like uh, and, and you're, like you're, my, you're my the golden yeah. eldorado just feels so out of place like when they're oh, like, my oh yeah it. like yeah. It looked like uh, someone threw up uh, on a Disney film in El Dorado. It was just such a stark, uh, just so jarring. Uh, even their 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 trip on the ship to to get to the to the island, 
like oh, yeah. everything like like the chase scene in the beginning looks fantastic and then it just looks like garbage like absolute like saturday morning like early saturday morning like uh oh what was that that early uh robot uh saturday morning cartoon yeah. it, really, it had trading cards with it and anything i don't know i'll insert it if i find it but there <laughs> it just looked so bad like beast wars almost when when they went like full oh school, okay right? yeah that's that makes sense <laughs> and it just like oh like what what are you doing why did why did it's like someone like spilt like coffee on a painting and I just hated it. And it just, it was distracting and it was lazy because like, like Manny said, it's like, it, they just decided to, to uh, CGI animate gold. Like they couldn't have just drawn the gold. Uh, I don't Would've know. Would have looked better. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I think if they're, when they're, uh, as Manny said, like when they're kind of going over like a large landscape and there's just some 3d elements in the back um, and then like, like the yeah. dreams, the dream sequences in in Joseph are really cool, like very stylized, absolutely, and, and not you know not trying to like emulate something that actually exists. So like in a dream, you can make it super stylized, and okay, yeah, it's supposed to look like that. But uh, in the case of you know, like I said, with Spirit and the Train, like it's gonna look out of place because it's against two D, and you know. Anyway, do you do you gentlemen want to get into the first movie? Sure. Let's talk a little bit about All right. Prince of Egypt. Uh, released December 15th, 1998, directed by Brenda Chapman, Steve Hickner, and Simon Wells, with music by Hans Zimmer, is The Prince of Egypt. Uh, this had actually, like, again, DreamWorks does not skimp on their cast members. This is uh, so insane. Great this is cast. Val Kilmer as Moses and God. <laughs> <laughs> Val Kilmer was like, as you do, as, as high as he was. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm sure Val Kilmer is somebody's god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe Chris uh, O'Donnell? I don't know. <laughs> That's a Batman forever joke. <laughs> uh, Ralph Phineas as Ramses. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer as Ralph Zipporah. Fiennes. What? 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 Ralph Fiennes as what Phineas. <laughs> That's Voldemort, man. Or, I was like confused for a second like that. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> Freak me out. Ooh. I've never read it. I've heard it, but I've never read it. I need to go uh, take a shower now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sandra Bullock as Miriam. Jeff yeah. Goldblum uh, as Aaron. Jeff as Goldblum Jeff Goldblum. As, <laughs> as Jeff Goldblum as Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Patrick Stewart as Seti, uh, Helen Mirren as the Queen, and then these two. I didn't hear it when I watched it, oh, but then when I when I, when I when I when I saw that it was them, I just I couldn't unhear them. Yeah. It's uh, Steve Martin as Hotep and Martin Short as Hue, who are the the priests. And like Man, after oh, I, God. yeah, after I heard it, I was like, oh, that's them. <laughs> yeah, like we're watching Three Amigos again. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, this, the cast is just is solid all around, and like, the, for me personally, the only one that's like that sounds like the actor is Jeff Goldblum because he's <laughs> Jeff himself. Goldblum. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but the voice acting is again just stellar. And and, the, and Hans Zimmer is you don't hire mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer for for five bucks, right? I mean, you hire Hans Zimmer to to put out an Academy Award winning score, uh, which I think that this was just a fan like the original songs in this still give me uh like glassy eye and like chills oh it's man the, the plagues like that is phenomenal and just like that sequence alone like you who i called brother just ah uh, i can't sing it i want to sing it but i'm not <laughs> It's it's so good. Like I get goosebumps like when I listen to it sometimes. Yeah, I'll I'll have to literally like because my this is my wife's favorite film, especially of these, but one of her favorite animated films anyway. So we do watch this quite a bit, and my kids love it. Um, but yeah, there there are certain times where just because the emotions building and everything, where I'm like I have to excuse myself because it still gets me. Um, it's just such a powerful. I mean, it's the Book of Exodus. Um. It, it, which is, I mean, that's that's the that's the theme kind of that we need to talk about too. Is how this is what kind of sets uh, DreamWorks apart from Disney, where Disney would go more of the um, fairy like, tale, 
grim fairy tale exactly and they would very they would be very cognizant of, of not kind of towing that religious line where dreamworks is like no we're doing full-on features of bible passages and bible books you know actually though so so like you said i i know that i know what you mean is that like disney is very very uh sure to not allude to anything religious because they don't want to alienate anybody and say like, Oh, we're, we're all about Jesus or we're all about, you know, Muhammad. They just don't, they don't want to do anything like they're, they're like, no, these are just stories. Um, well, however, they did do something with the hunchback in Notre Dame. Like there was a lot of like religious imagery and like, there's a song called God help the outcast. Mm -hmm. it did get religious, but the main, but that wasn't the focal point. The main focal point was like, who's a man, who's a monster. Yeah. It's not like, it's not a biblical story. If anything, Frodo, they or you know, Cal Frodo, they paint it as a complete like villain as far yeah. as religion goes. But yeah, yeah, go ahead, Cody. Um, so but I do want to point out because as I've said uh, at least twice on the show now, uh, I grew up in a, a very strictly religious home, and my mother, uh, God help her, uh, she saw religion in pretty much anything. Uh so she would she would liken she likened um the fall of Anakin and star Wars to like how people succumb to sin. And, and, and like, there's just, there's like, there's lots of uh, things like that, but this was kind of one of those things that my mom was like, Oh God is working through this company and we're going to go see a Bible story, you know, at the theater and it'll be good. Like, Oh, bring your friends. Cause we're going to witness to your friends. And, and like, it's like, you know, like, I, like not even kidding. Like that's something that happened and you know, it, it, that's your jam go for it. And it's a good story, like no, no matter what you believe. Um, but it is basically the story of the exodus of the people of, of Israel uh, out of Egypt. And also the story of Passover kind of uh, is interwoven in there as well. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. Like, it's a good story re regardless of your religion, because it, it really is Like you don't have to be of any type of religious background to enjoy this film and get the film. Because I think what's so smart about the film um, is that the the main focal point and emotional crux of the film is the relationship between two brothers, uh, between Moses and Ramses, and that's just literally it, it builds that relationship and then it kind of like puts a tears it down, and it does it so so well. I, I think they chose this film not because they were trying to fly a a, a, a biblical story under the radar and kind of like and not to offend your mother she's probably very nice <laughs> she's, very she's nice not lady. gonna watch this <laughs> oh, well, she should. um no um well then fucking a um no but you know it it wasn't like a trojan horse type thing is what i'm saying it's i think that they smartly chose this story because of its thematic elements and i think the same kind of goes for for joseph and uh, the king of dreams where it's like they picked stories um and, and maybe maybe they had that conversation. Maybe they're just like, hey, you know, what's an what's an epic story that we haven't already seen because there's already so many iterations of Snow White. There's instead of just treading water uh, and, and going back to the well, so to speak, like Disney did, or, or retelling Disney uh, films and stories uh, from you know like grim fairy tales and stuff like that, because they knew they weren't Disney. They decided to be like, hey, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna throw caution in the wind. We might alienate some people, but we're gonna we're gonna make a thematic and epic action film. And it just so happens that it's set in a biblical setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, the other thing that I kind of want to bring up is like they were very careful that um, I think there's only one time where where uh, Mo where Moses is in with the burning bush, and uh, and God says, "I am." you know, sent me. Um, but basically in all their instances, they don't refer to him as Elohim. They don't refer to him as, as basically anything except just God. Like, you know, look through heaven's eyes. This is God, you know, like, so they're, they're, they're not being hyper specific. Um, and it, honestly, it doesn't get into like super religious stuff. Um, it, I mean, if you look at the, 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 you know, the, the Torah and, and the old Testament, a lot of it never goes like, Oh, and then Jesus said this, ha, 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 you know? <laughs> and so it's, so it like, honestly, you could read a lot of those stories and like not, uh, take any particular religious, you know, reference out of it. Um, so it's kind of a, a safe spot in that it's a story that a lot of people know, uh, but it also covers, you know, Judaism and Christianity, um, which are, I, I would say 
more often than not, like what you would find in America, especially in, you know, in the, in the late nineties, a general perception that it would be more of like a Protestant or Catholic, uh, um, you know, country sure. Christian in quotes. It had a, it had a, a budget of $70 uh, million and it had a box office worldwide box office uh, of $218 million. So it, uh, it was, it was a hit. It, it, did, yeah. it did great. Yeah. And uh, it released it, there's some movies that came out around that same time, just to kind of place you uh, were patch Adams, star Trek insurrection <laughs> and the red line. The thin oh. red line. No, yeah. The thin red line. Yeah. This, uh-huh. Is this in 99? No, oh, well, this okay. December eight ninety December ninety eight. I, sure. I was just trying to find some movies that were kind of around that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh God, can we not? I can't talk about Terrence Malick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Malick. Oh. but no. Uh, the last thing I want to say, and, and I want to give uh, Manny whatever closing thoughts he has on on Prince of Egypt because that is kind of like the biggest one that we're talking about. But the last point I want to make is I like how brutal these the all of these films are they they don't shy away from the brutality we saw the um the calling scene we know what's going on i mean it's it's killing kids it's killing kids on the camera for a a film where you're gonna bring your five-year-old children i mean uh uh, ramus you know spoiler ramesses um son is is killed and, and like all like all the boils and it's a very horrific uh, film and, and it just didn't shy away from it. It didn't turn, you know, it wasn't a lot of things happening and showing people's facial reactions because we're watching a Disney film. It was boots on the ground, camera in the faces of, of these horrific things. And I really appreciate that. And I appreciate their respect for the audience and their younger audience to, to get that and to be able to handle that. Mm-hmm. I wish uh i remember i first walked saw this like first time i ever saw it, i was like very very young uh but i went to catholic school like from like elementary to like high school and i wished my teachers showed this film like every because instead of this we saw the ten commandments which is like Ugh. a three hour movie which boring yeah right yeah i think and like <laughs> i think you, like you mentioned that like how kind of horrific it is is part of the reason why my teachers didn't show it <laughs> to, to to the class, right? yeah. It's so it is. It really is. I was surprised when I, when I rewatched. I'm like, wow, this is. They're not shying away from it, and like it's uh, at the time, especially a bold choice to do. Um, it's brilliant, yeah. so good. And like you, 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 you just know what's going on, like what's happening, all the events, uh, the horrors of it. It's so it's so perfectly crafted. It, it is of the two D animated films we're talking about, the best one by far, in my opinion. Yeah. Hey Manny, uh, I, I want to ask you real quick since you were in Catholic school. Um, did you ever see the animated stories of the Bible? No, I don't think so. Maybe a, I did when I was younger, like third grade, fourth grade, but yeah. So it, it was a it was a it was a animated story of three kids, um, and basically like the the beginning of it of it was they were like on an archaeological expo- expedition. And like they would fall into the earth and then like get transported back in time to witness the Bible stories. I have come. I mean, I I knew you would come, but you've come. I have. Why does that sound so familiar? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah. I'm I sure you sounds so familiar. I'm sure you've seen it, but like uh yeah, that's that's another thing I'm sure you saw. We we might cover it at some point, uh, but it's definitely not high on our list. <laughs> let's go over to road to el dorado so um how's the uh, how's the escape plan coming all right all right wait i'm getting something Here is the plan. In the dead of night, you and I mm. grab some provisions, hijack one of those uh, longboats, and then we row back to Spain like there's no manana. Back to Spain, yeah? Yeah. In a rowboat. You got it. Great. Sensational. And that that's your plan, is it? That's pretty much it. Well, I like it. So, how do we get on deck? Mm. Uh, released uh, 2000. And uh, this was director Don Paul, 
You had starring Kevin Klein, Kenneth Brana, Rosie Perez, Armand Asante, and Edward James Olmos. Um, this, so I put out the Twitter poll uh, on the uh, YouTube's Twitter uh, handle, uh, just asking what people's favorite uh, traditionally animated or classically animated 2D DreamWorks film was. And by a by a margin, by a small margin, this was the resounding favorite, even over Prince of Egypt. So, I mean, I just watched this one for the first time the other night. I watched it with my with my wife and my two younger girls. My my oldest girl was, you know, buried in her own music and and the boy was playing Fortnite like as he does, unfortunately. It's an epidemic, people. <laughs> uh, but, build and shoot, build and shoot. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, can we kill this game? Um, but yeah, my my seven year old and my five year old and my wife, we all sit down and I'm like, This is this is the same studio that brought you Prince of Egypt. So my wife was super psyched. She was out in like 15 minutes she's like this is not prince of egypt i'm done with this and it didn't really hold my girl's attention so much where my it, it, except my five-year-old is just like i can see his butt she's not wearing enough clothes uh you know this uh, this is kind of the prince of egypt but on a more uh kind of adult not safe for work uh kind of themes uh LDR, it's very secular the road yeah. to el Dorado goes to some racy things and, and to be quite honest i wasn't even sure the sexuality of our two main uh, uh protagonists for half the movie until um rosie perez's character gets introduced I, i'm not complaining i was just like wow this is a bold choice it's, am i watching uh you know a, a two homosexual led children's film until i wasn't and then i'm like okay it, but it's still pretty racy what did you guys what's your guys's thing with uh the road to el dorado we'll start with manny you said you were you were holding uh <laughs> what you thought your your favorite was but i think you just said prince of egypt but where does uh the road to el dorado lie uh i said prince of egypt uh, is the best one road to el dorado is my personal favorite ah of it. yeah uh uh this is this is fun so much fun to me uh, I I last my, my rewatch I was just smiling most of the time because it's it's so it's 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 very like the humor is very childlike in a way but so fun that's like the best way I can describe it it's fun and I remember I was like five when I got it and I remember crying <laughs> at like a baby's R us to my mom to buy the VHS tape of it and like she got it <laughs> she you got were wrong it. yeah. And I saw it and like just destroyed that VHS, like all my other VHSs. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. Um, I just, for me, I think I like the mythological aspect of it. You know, the road, like El Dorado, the city of gold. Um, that's such like an interesting concept to me. And that is based off like an actual story of this conquista. Not, it's not Hernan Cortez, but uh, a conquistador did go crazy. Like trying to find the like El Dorado, because uh, there's this rumor of it. Um, yeah, no, I just think it's so much fun. I just love like the luscious uh, landscape of uh, South America. The El Dorado, the city itself, looks great in its 2D animation. Looks very colorful. Um, yeah, no, I just I just enjoy this film a lot. I smile every time I watch it. Hang, hang on, Cody. Before we we go to you, I just had an epiphany. Uh, it, it's probably because you're on here again, Manny. But this is the animated version of E2 Mama Tambien. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I wow. know. <laughs> I didn't think of this till now. Wait a minute. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So Manny, Manny was on our uh, uh, Alfonso Cuaron uh, director's cut, and we're talking about E2 Tambien or E2 Mama Tambien. I still can't say it right. Months <laughs> later, this is that. Oh my God. In a lot of ways, it, it really is. Yeah. Like these two friends go on a trip, their friendship gets tested, there's a woman involved. <laughs> Like, yeah, oh man, you're absolutely they're both, right. They're both interested in the one. Oh my yeah. god. Let me tell All you something right. about Cho. When I as a five year old, she was like my first like animated crush. Like, 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 like every kid my age, like when they were younger <laughs> watching cartoons, there was always like, this one character that they were just like attracted to. Sure. And Cho was like definitely mine growing up. But you're, yeah, you're like, no, I, I hope this doesn't awaken something in me. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife looked at me as soon as she she popped on the screen and she just gave me a mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, she what? She's animated. She's like, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, she's she's built. She's drawn very well. She, she's pretty thick. <laughs> she's yeah, thick, that's thick, the word. thick girl. Thick. Slim yeah. thick. That's the word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so, Gucci. I want to put a Gucci on that uh, Aztec. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Cody, take it away. So, so uh, this is not one of my favorites. I think my my uh, my opinion on this movie is very similar to that of the critics. Rotten Tomatoes has it at forty eight percent. Metacritic has it at 51%. Um, it also didn't do very well at the box office. It uh, had a budget of $95 million. It had a worldwide box office of $76 million. Mm, womp, womp. Womp, womp. Um, I don't know if you do this, but they actually planned... Uh, I'm sorry if I cut you off, but they actually planned like a series with these characters originally. Like It wasn't going to just be El Dorado. Like, they, they wanted to like, take these characters and take them to like other mythological cities across the world. I, I would have watched it. Yeah, I would have watched it. I would have watched that. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Sounds like a travel channel romp, you know? It's like, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, I would have watched that. And I'm I'm not saying that I think it's a bad movie. I, it's just it's just compared to the other movies on this list, uh, it just wasn't quite in my rotation as much when I was little. Um, so it's it just kind of, eh. I think I saw this one in theaters maybe, uh, but it was just like eh, I, don't, I don't know. It's fine. I, I I don't think it's like particularly great, but I also don't think it's bad. Uh, it was also narrated by Elton John. Yeah, that's, that's you true. the music. The music's solid, also. That's another thing. The music is terrible, man. I hate the songs in this film. <laughs> I thought it was good. No, I like it. It was like if Elton John, like I'm thinking Elton John, you know, can you feel the love tonight from the Lion King? This is he wrote this in a McDonald's parking lot. Like this was terrible. It's just like, and we're singing what we're doing, and the guys are finding treasure, and the they're looking at the hot tubs now. And I'm just like, oh my god! Well, you like, compare anything to Lion King? Like, yeah, it pales in comparison. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna compare the guy that sang the song from Lion King to the guy that sang the song in El Dorado. It was bad. <laughs> Elton John didn't didn't lend his his uh his talent to very many animated projects. Let's say right. Um, so The Lion King obviously was was a was a instant home run. Uh, Rotel Dorado was less of a home run and more of like a base hit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this yeah. movie did release uh, uh, in or around uh, the release of The Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas, Ooh, American cool. Psycho, and Frequency. So Very those are the great. Yeah. Those are the movies that I thought people would recognize. Uh The Flintstones and Viva Rock Vegas was the one without John Goodman, so it wasn't as good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why yeah, it works. That's that's why that's why it was bad. Yeah, <laughs> no other yeah. reason. And, and who knew that El Dorado was the most gratuitous film on that list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love this movie, man. I, I'm totally with you, Manny. This was a, a fun romp. This was yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fun. The action was cool, like the sword fights and 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 all that stuff, and then and then like the the scene where they're playing like Aztec basketball and like they're like hitting it with their hips, and and it's the it's the armadillo. Like that's all fun. Like I, I'm again, I'm not against this movie. It's just kind of low on my on my list of two D uh, DreamWorks movies. I think like that's fair. I think the banter between Tulio and Miguel is just so well, and Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh work so well off each other. I agree. Like, like every line of dialogue that they, they, they have together is just like great. Uh, it, I'm such a Bob's Burgers fan, so like <laughs> hearing him now, it's just I just see him as like this is young Mr. Fish Odor. I totally brother, saw that. My brother said the same exact thing when he watched it with me. <laughs> Your brother's a smart man. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, so hello, Bob. hates this, so I guess we'll move on. <laughs> uh, so next one is a straight to DVD movie. Uh, Joseph King of Dream. They're straight to VHS and DVD, I suppose. Um, Joseph, King of Dreams, um, basically is the prequel to uh, the Prince of Egypt. Um, this is how the the Hebrews of the Israelites got from uh, Canaan, and they kind of moved into uh, 
Egypt. And I know John and I actually have a connection <laughs> over this movie um, that we discovered uh, while talking. But again, a really stacked cast. Ben Affleck is Joseph. Mark <laughs> Hamill is Judah. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Jody Benson is Asenath. I don't remember that. Uh, I think that's mom. Yeah, right. the mom. Asenath, um, yeah. Uh, James Eckhouse is Potiphar. Uh, Dan Castellaneta is in, in there as well. Uh, there's just so, again, so many people. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Manny, man, what did you think about this one? Uh, yeah, not my least favorite. I want to say for definitely. Um, this is your least favorite. Yeah. Wow. I mean, at least probably my least favorite. Um, there's just uh, I was, I wasn't as engaged as I wanted to be. Um, it just was. It didn't entice me. Like I found myself looking at my phone sometimes, and when usually when that happens, it's usually an indicator where I'm not enjoying as much as I want to. Um, there, I don't know. I just wasn't. It, for me personally, I thought like the voice cast felt a little off, specifically with Ben Affleck. Like, I, that's fair. Ben, ben Affleck just does not his voice does not render well to like period pieces. You know? <laughs> like, he's just, he's it, just it, douchey no matter what. Yeah, he just doesn't sound like anyone that would live in that. I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> weird for me, but um, yeah, I was I just wasn't the biggest fan of it. Uh, I know it was cheaper to make, so I can't really fault the animation and, and what I think of it. Um. I do like the dream sequences. That I think we mentioned in the beginning. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, it, it reminded me a lot of like Van Gogh paintings, like various like lines, very stylized. But overall, yeah, wasn't wasn't feeling it. Wasn't for me. Yeah, e even the co-director Robert Ramirez uh, went on went on record and stated uh, when the film was not working very well, when the storytelling was was heavy handed and clunky. I see. I didn't get that. I thought this was uh, probably the second best made film as far as animation goes. And it for like if you compare this to and, and you could kind of apples and apples compare it to Prince of Egypt because it, it's technically like the prequel. Um, I thought the two D was a, a little less on point, of course, than Prince of Egypt or even like Stallion uh, or Spirit Spirit whatever. I've been drinking. Sorry. Um, I, I thought that. But in the, I think this was the best CG, um, like Cody stated at the top of the show. Uh, while during the dream sequences, it's very uh, Vincent Van Gogh, like the wheat fields. Um, I, I thought, I thought it worked. I, I, it felt, it felt like this could have been one of those like Pixar shorts. You know, I, I felt like you could really have chopped this up and made it into a really clean. 15 20 minutes 30 minutes maybe it didn't have to it didn't feel like it needed to be feature because it, it just felt so stretched out and and yeah it did have that those kind of like losing focus kind of like you're checking your phone uh moments but i i think that the the voice cast of course mark hamill is like that's my god we joke val kilmer someone's god mark hamill's mind um you know he the voice cast worked. I, I thought it was. I thought it was. It was well acted enough. Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck, um, but it, direction wise, a, a, apart from it just feeling a little fat, I thought it was good. It, it's definitely not my least favorite. I put this probably at number three uh, out of all of them. Cody, yeah, I mean, I, I really like this. Again, this is one that was in heavy rotation because. It was God working through Steven Spielberg to, you know, to bring the gospel to the world. Sure. Um, so obviously I saw it a, a boatload. Um, uh, I, I actually, I mean, it's obviously not, not quite to the level of Prince of Egypt, um, but it, I think it is fairly well animated and obviously they have the, they have the talent, you know, the voice talent. Uh, you can tell like, uh, like both of you, both you and Miguel, uh, uh, Manny said, uh, sorry, we from the from El Dorado. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was um, calling him like in Miami, like Miguel and Manny always looks confused. Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, so you know, it is a straight to DVD movie, straight straight to home video. Um, so obviously, they're not going to shell out quite as much for like. I mean, Ben Affleck and Mark Hamill are like the headliners, and then you have like you have some standbys like Jody Benson and 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 the like. Um, but kind of the rest of them are like, eh, these people are like in things, but not like, you know, they're not like, you know, movie stars, you know? Sure. So um, you can kind of tell like, it's not quite as, quite as sharp as, as a uh, Prince of Egypt. Uh, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, and uh, my, so my connection with John on this movie is actually um, both of us uh, were pretty heavily in, uh, my family was also into musicals. 
Um, uh, so I went and saw um, the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat <laughs> probably at least Here seventeen, probably at least seventeen times in person, and also you know like the live the live musical, uh, and then also had it on VHS, and so we watched it all the time there. So this is kind of a story that like is really big with my mom and like uh you know it's uh it's it's good and uh john john just played in it right didn't weren't yeah. you uh, weren't you a big a big uh broadway star yeah <laughs> I, I i was in the uh in the play um broadway it was this was like in lancaster california <laughs> or maybe vegas i don't remember uh but yeah I, I played joseph uh but yeah we we, we played it oh, in of, like, cool. yeah a big big performing arts uh studio and and our theater rather. And yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I love, I like the story. Um, I'm not, I'm not a very, I'm not a religious person by any means, but I, I do like the story. And I, I think, like I said, it, it would have felt better if it was just kind of chopped up and maybe a short or something. But I think that um, the tension was good. I think that the, the acting was good. Um, and, and like you said, uh, Cody, you have Ben Affleck and Mark Hamill and everyone else, but this was kind of a, a smaller cast anyways it, it wasn't as as big and grandiose as uh, prince of egypt where that kind of required more uh household names and i think that you know coming off of losing their ass on uh el dorado financially i think that was appropriate it does not feel like a direct to dvd film i i still feel like this could have been a had a thematic release and it might have done a little bit better than the, i just think they were a little gun shy yeah, I agree. And one other thing I want to add with this, um, so this one, uh, biblically speaking, has a little bit less. Uh, uh, there's not as much like wrath. There's not as much uh, spiritual things happening happening in the in the physical world. So like we don't see the plagues. We don't see. There's a lot less drama going on that way. Um, and I will say, you know, as kind of somebody who grew up, you know, going to church all the time, and these movies are fairly close. They obviously take some artistic you know, license with a lot of the things like animating, like how, how do you see those dreams? Like how do you, how do you present that? Um, and obviously there's some, some elements of the story that are kind of added just to like, you know, make it more understandable quicker, if that makes sense. Um, they kind of, you know, you know uh, compress the story a little bit in certain places. Um, but I think overall they do a pretty, both of these movies do a pretty good, uh, job of presenting the biblical source material without being like, like, oh, and then Barney jumps out, <laughs> or, or like, or hammer like, over the head over, hammer yeah. the head over you, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's not too, it's not super religious, but it's also not like gonna, you know, make the religious people angry. That that's kind of the big thing, because because obviously, you know, up even through the two thousands, um, you know, the religious the 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 religious folks were very big on picketing things. And you know, shutting movies or music down that they disagreed with. So uh, the satanic panic, <laughs> as we've we've talked about before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's also released around um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Red Planet, and 102 Dalmatians. So those are just some movies that kind of were in theaters when this was released. And the score did not could not hold uh, Prince of Egypt's jock, uh, in my no, opinion. No, it was yeah. yeah. <laughs> the some of the songs just felt like when it when he started singing, it just felt out of place for me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's singing now. Okay, sure. We're singing because um, we gotta have. You know, you know better than I is actually a great song. Like of all the songs that are in that, is like, that the, is that the one in the beginning? Um, no, it's when he's in the prison and he's and he's oh. singing while he's while he's building. He's he's like fixing the tree that he that he broke. That like that's a good song. Like I'm not saying that the like it's not. You know, hand over fist like a better you know song than the average song in prince of egypt but i'd say they're they're both pretty good all i gotta say is by the power of raw all right yeah let's move on. <laughs> oh sinbad legend of the seven seas the day began with such promise and now look my sea monster is dead and i still don't have the book of peace all because of you sinbad uh-huh and you are Eris, the goddess of discord. No doubt you've seen my likeness on the temple walls. I sh <laughs> you know, they don't do you justice. Uh huh. Now, about my sea monster. Right, right. Listen, I'm sorry about that. I don't suppose a heartfelt apology would. <laughs> heartfelt?
Well, from you? Sinbad, you don't have a heart. <sighs> That's what I like about you. Uh, this will be quick. <laughs> this will be quick because we both, we both, we all three got in the room <laughs> and, and uh, we were all like, I didn't watch Sinbad. Did you watch Sinbad? <laughs> and then John was like, I didn't watch Sinbad. Did you watch Sinbad? <laughs> and Manny was like, I, I watched like 30 minutes of it. What did you watch? And we all, we both shook our heads and just shrugged. And, uh, I don't watched know. The trailer a lot. Manny, how was that 30 minutes? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, very, very, very stylized in its animation. Like in its, in the, not, not just how it looks, but just like the movement. And, and like when they're sword fighting, it's just like, quick rapid cut like exaggerated uh movements um the 3d definitely is uh dated um specifically with those eris god monsters but there's a lot of cool stuff into it um like the eris the god's chaos like when she's like in her like own astral world plane uh looking down on earth is actually a really cool sequence and like really animated really really well it's like a um, bubble bath or something, right? It's like I mean, it's it's weird. <laughs> it's not just a <laughs> bubble bath. It's like it's like her own dimension, I guess you could say. It's I, I don't know how to describe it honestly. I, the, but, the animation, from what I've seen, um, especially with like how the eyes are kind of like the eyes and like the hair is super, you know, curvy and and floaty. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like some of the animation from like Ralph Bakshi. Like it's <laughs> like it's just kind of like super weird and like. You know, you can tell it's a dude, but like he's kind of like he kind of moves a little off, you know, like maybe maybe not quite like what a human would do. Yeah. Because I mean, in Prince of Egypt and and King of Dreams, at least, you know, it's very like these are humans. You know, these are humans and they only work the way humans work. They only move the way humans would move. But both Sinbad and El Dorado, like they kind of they're a little bit more silly with how they move. Mm -hmm. So n not a knock against them. Just like, that's kind of, it's kind of an interesting, like Joseph could have been filmed. Sure. You know, and, and this Sinbad very much could not have been filmed very easily. <laughs> <laughs> For, I, I know that like the story is more of, it, it's kind of a, a theme of like underestimating a woman in a, in a, in a powerful role, like in an authoritative role. And then it's, but, but it's like, I heard it's just, it's handled in such a, like a ham fisted way that it's just not very enjoyable. It's kind of a return to force where I think they kind of ratchet up the sexuality a little bit in this film, like they did in El Dorado. Um, this is just all a, just from reading and and a little bit of of digging into this, uh, not watching the film, but yeah, it was just um, financially. I don't think it, it was this released th thematically. Yeah, it was. Oof! So sixty so, million, and it made eighty. I mean, it's not it's not really what you're shooting for, but at least it made its budget back. Yeah, Brad Pitt, Catherine Zeta Jones, Michelle Pfeiffer, Catherine Zeta Jones, <laughs> she dips beneath lasers. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was thinking it's like the first one that isn't first and only one that isn't a musical. Okay, okay, yeah, there's no music, uh, or like songs involved. And this had Joseph uh, Phineas, uh, as Cody would say, uh, <laughs> other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Spirit, the stallion -y horsey thing of the Cimarrons. Yeah. Merc, you okay? <laughs> um, Corporal, round up some volunteers to uh, take this animal to the stables. Not the stables. Sir? The corral. It's time to break that horse. Um, yeah, this one, I actually like this one a lot. Um, my wife is a big fan. Um, uh, she, she did a lot with horses as a, as a child. So, um, uh, spirit, uh, is, is a really great movie. Uh, let me see, where did I put it in the notes? Did I mess this up? Oh, I, I think we put it. <laughs> that was the best slide ever. <laughs> um, no, no one listening to the podcast could appreciate what just happened. Uh, as, as Cody was stating how much this film meant to his wife, she yeah. split in like it was risky business. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, uh, uh, starring Matt Damon as a horse. Yeah. Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of the funniest part about the whole thing. Um, there's a few other people. <laughs> yeah. uh, James Cromwell. That was funny. When I thought, <laughs> I, was listening, I was watching the movie and listening to it, I'm like, who is this guy? Like, I've, I've heard it. 
And when I found out about Damon, I'm like, wow, okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, this is directed by Ken Asbury and Lorena Cook uh, with music by Hans Zimmer. Um, well, at least some of the music by Hans Zimmer. Um, had a, it was released on the 24th of May, 2002, and it was released against Star Wars Episode Two, the original Spider-Man reboot the Sony put out, and then Undercover Brother, which I thought was a great movie. <laughs> 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 it's like it's like it's like a resurgence of the black exploitation films, and I think those are great. So, like Undercover Brother was just a hilarious movie. But another news: Cody Spirit. Smith never coming on director's cut. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but I mean, this was a great movie. Um, uh, it kind of tells, it's like an American folklore sort of story. I, I wouldn't say that I've, uh, ever heard this story anywhere else. So I don't think they pulled this from anywhere. I think it's original, you know, content, which would be a first for them. Yeah. Cause I mean, Sinbad, uh, the two Bible stories road to El Dorado is kind of pretty well, well trod, you know, ground. Um, so this is like the only one that they did on their own. And I think this one was pretty successful. It had a budget of 80 million and it did a uh, worldwide box office of 122 million. So uh, it also went on to have its own um, straight to Netflix sequel, um, which I think is funny because the movie itself is not on Netflix anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> the straight to Netflix. Uh, I had to take out my wife's DVD copy and, and, and lug out the PS3 so I could watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually got me too. Cause I'm like, Oh, it spirits on here. And then I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't all CGI. Like we wouldn't be talking about it. And it got me for like a good, like 15 minutes. I'm like, this is trash. I got to turn this off. <laughs> uh, Manny, what do you think about uh, spirit? Uh, I think it's pretty, pretty damn good um uh if i were to like rank it i think it'd be like their second best i think uh the animation when it works it really works i think the story of spirit is uh a story of resilience of of uh yeah the story of resilience and just trying to like fight off uh all your problems it's really really well done really well done yeah. I think my, my favorite uh, my favorite part about this is that they didn't make the horse talk. Mm -hmm. so the talking was done of like the horse thinking about what was happening and kind of and narrating. Um, but I think it would have been super weird if it yeah. was like a horse's mouth opening and Brad Pitt's voice coming out of it. Or Matt Damon. <laughs> or Matt, sorry, Matt Damon. Uh, Brad Pitt was in Sinbad. I, I'm, I'm conflating the two Hollywood hunks. It was, uh, <laughs> it was weird when Sinbad opened his mouth and Brad Pitt's voice came out. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and, uh, uh, basically the, uh, sp spirit, uh, also had, um, all the music was done by Hans Zimmer, um, but uh, I'm, I'm looking it up now uh, because it, all the songs were sung by the same person. Uh, were they is, really? Yeah, it's like I mean, if you think you, the here I like, a, like it's kind of like a Nickelback knockoff. Uh, <laughs> That's where you want to be in your career. Very early thousands when I was yeah. doing it. Like uh, this is definitely a product of his time. Oh, well, it was uh, sang by Matt Damon. Yeah. <laughs> the jerk. The see here. Um, uh, I'm reading here uh, the year. Uh, I see here Hans Zimmer. Yeah, there was all done by Hans Zimmer, including the European hit "Here I Am" uh, by uh, Canadian artist Brian Adams. So Brian Adams was the guy who sung most of the uh, most of the songs in there. So yeah, womp womp. <laughs> I mean, uh, talk about a uh, a film that that was all top heavy as far as talent goes with the star. I mean, Matt Damon's. The money. James Cromwell is good. I mean, James Cromwell has been in everything, but he's not like a big, he doesn't cost a ton to put in your film. And then after that, it's a big drop off. Like if you go down like uh, Wikipedia and you do the cast, you get to Matt, Le uh, Matt Levin, who is like the fifth or sixth person in the voice cast. It's not even a picture of Matt Levin. It's a picture of a NASCAR car. So, I mean, that is, that's all you need to know about the voice cast. Uh, but, but, didn't need to have a big voice cast to be fair absolutely like like cody said you know i did like the 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 choice to have the horses speak horse um because you got you, you knew exactly what they were saying uh it was almost like watching a foreign film uh which i appreciated and again going back to like prince of egypt where they respected their audience to kind of get it and and not you know ham fist uh talking horses or even subtitles where you just got to see uh these animals emoting in a in a very powerful way i thought that was brilliant um 
everything looks looks great except uh like cody said at the top of the show the the little block train uh was the the lincoln log train was completely out of uh out of character for the rest of the uh or out of aesthetics rather um than the rest of the film to be honest i thought it, it had a riveting first act i love the first act uh the third act was quite good I felt the second act, the the wheels fell off or the horseshoes fell off. Uh, you know, <laughs> to, uh, it, it was a little boring in, in the middle uh, when he gets captured and um, there, just all that. Uh, the initial stuff, it lost me, and, and and it definitely had those like cell phone checking moments for me. Um, I'll, I'll be the wet blanket on this one. You know, Cody's been the wet blanket all night, so I'll I'll take the rain. Uh, <laughs> take the reins. Uh -huh. so, oh, I'm just killing it tonight. Horse uh, puns. <laughs> words, um, horse puns. That's what other, you guys tune in for. Yeah. <laughs> one other thing I did want to I did want to bring up is um, another place that they could have messed this up really bad is um, their depiction of Native Americans. Um, and I think they honestly did a fairly good job of of going like, no, white people were dicks, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to Native Absolutely. Americans, That's and fair. like, and like, and like, you know, the story was basically about you know spirit, uh, but but it, it was kind of like meta textually, like more about like, oh, these white people are just kind of taking everything that they see, sure, and they're pushing Native Americans out, and they're kind of just like killing them as, as they see fit or not killing them if they can use them in some way. So like there was no distinction between the people and the horses as far as the Caucasians went. Yeah. 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 As far, as far as the, the, the westward, uh, you know, God fearing Americans, you know, <laughs> going across the, you know, across the country. Um, I think they did it very well. And it was like the native Americans, all they wanted to do was be left alone. <laughs> like, we want so, we want to do our thing and we want to we want to you know mess with our horses and we want to hunt and, and do everything that we do as a people and that's it leave so, us alone <laughs> some of the stuff uh when i'm watching it reminded me a little bit of slavery um it's like how they treated the horses how uh um they just constant capture trying to break a horse to subdue them and then like in the end just kind of like they're all chained up with like things around their necks carrying this uh hauling this huge ass uh i don't even know contraption i guess i could say um if some of it felt very evocative of slavery and i do think some of that was on purpose oh absolutely it was yeah well and like there's a very there's a scene very early on after um the uh the americans catch spirit and then they catch uh a native american uh man named little creek and basically they you know when they when they caught the horse they're like oh put him out on the post no food or water and then they bring in Little Creek and they tie him to a separate post out in the just like it's literally in the middle of this fort, you know, no food or water. He's just he's just tied up to this post and that's it. Like that just shows you like, yeah, like like Manny said, it, it really, it really uh, is evocative of like eh, these people don't matter. <laughs> you know, they're they're as useful as this horse. They can as long as they do what we tell them to do, we'll keep them around. We'll 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 take care of them to the basics of their needs. And that's it. Yeah. But I, I do think that they, you know, they they were very respectful in that way of going like, no, 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 <laughs> we're not. This isn't we're not going to we're not going to push this under the rug. This is what happened. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think again, uh, praise to Manny for this, the perfect word to describe this film is evocative of of these kind of emotions and of this uh, kind of subject matter, which I think they nailed uh, completely. Uh, they nailed it just as much as they nailed those horseshoes on those who's. So that is our <laughs> show. That's my last horse joke of the night. Uh, that is our show uh, for tonight. What a man! This is a blast. Nay, it can't be. <laughs> no, I was trying, I'm trying to think of a horse one, but I can't. <laughs> it's always great to have Manny Castellanos on the channel. Uh, you, you've seen him here on Director's Cut, but Manny's going to tell you where you could see him not on this channel. Take it away, sir. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Seriously. Uh, yes, no, thank, thank you, you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, you could find me. Uh, I have two podcasts now. My first one uh, is almost coming up on a year called Reel on Reel, which is my film podcast. Um, it's gonna, new episode is going to come out uh, sometime next week. Uh, it's going to be bi-monthly. Um, it's great. Going to have a lot of curating, a lot of good guests. John's going to be my guest uh, this year. It's going to be awesome. Like David Fincher. So that's going to be fun. You heard uh, it here first. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> and my second podcast is a recent one. It just came out like 
yesterday by the time of this recording. Uh, it's called Holocron Speakers. Uh, it's my Star Wars podcast. What I do with my friend, and we just talk everything Star Wars from his themes to his characters. Awesome. And yeah, that's basically it. And, and and what Manny said off air that he has quite a a line to line up because everyone and their mother that does podcasts is just like I want to be on a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> so if he doesn't get right back to you, you know, don't 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 kill you, right? There's a Q line. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cody the Smith, uh, always a pleasure, sir. Where yes, can the good kids find you. Yes, you can find me on Twitter as at not Cody Smith. Um, that's that's where I'm on social media the most. Um, you will not find me on, fa- I mean, I'm on Facebook too, but you won't find me cause I'm hiding from the anti-vaxxers and the, the <laughs> hyper-religious. So, um, so you, pr- you probably won't find me there. Um, I'm host of this show along with John. Um, but my other show is Fission, a Merfolk podcast. Uh, it's a podcast about the tribe of Merfolk and magic, the gathering. We talk about legacy modern, um, we're even working on getting some vintage content. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, you can support that show at patreon.com slash fishcast MTG. Um, and our show we're on YouTube and Twitch as youtube.com slash fishcast MTG and twitch.tv slash fishcast MTG. Now, John, yes. uh, before we move on, uh, to, to your plugs, um, you have an announcement about the podcast that kind of affects how we've done this podcast in the past. This is true, Cody. Thank you for that segue. You could, uh, before you could find uh, the YouTube's podcast on the Fish and a Mere Folk podcast uh, network, so to speak. But we are going to now that uh, the they said we said podcast network is is birthed uh, as of this week. Uh, you could already find shows like Director's Cut and the Cult of Films on there, uh, and we are going to be shifting all of the YouTube's uh, from. Fish and a Mere Folk Podcast Network to They Said We Said. So uh, you could already, yeah, as of the re- the release of this, you might be able to already find this on uh, the Spreaker site, but it will be on all your, you know, uh, uh, consumable podcast uh, networks on under They Said We Said Network. So we will be changing uh, YouTube's home. It's moving from Fission over to They Said We Said, where you could also find the other uh, movie podcasts like Director's Cut and um, and The Cult of Films. Uh, you could find me personally on this very channel because I this is my thing. Uh, they Said We Said. You could also find me on Twitter at Orzov Done. Find me on facebook all that all the good stuff um yeah uh you could also support this channel directly you could support uh shows like this very show uh and all the other things that we got going on on they said we said on patreon as well uh so until next time uh i mean do we have a sign off for this yet um i want you to play the Catherine zeta jones song from workaholics done (laughs) she deeps beneath the lasers She hasn't trapped me and Sean Connery.